Bueno. Hi and welcome back. This is the last segment in this first part of the course on setting up your e-portfolios and some of the main features. And maybe later on in the course we can come back and look at some more advanced features. But for now, I want to leave you with this brief thought. How e-portfolios support the HCT philosophy of learning by doing? Okay. Maybe not just a thought, maybe I'll show you. Let's have a look at one of our students' work. Mm, I'm attracted to uh, week eight, mainly because it looks nice. First of all, learning by doing. Well, this student has made sure that her portfolio reflects her personality. And you can see the way that she's really thought about the images that she's included in the portfolio. So week eight, share to learn. And that's what she's doing here with that delicious looking suite, sharing it. Although she never actually did share it, I think she had it all herself. Anyway, let's have a look at what she's sharing. Okay, this is a reflection on some practical work that she did. So she says, last week I presented in the auditorium how to do sweets. And she did a sweet called Berrylicious. And it does look pretty Berrylicious. And she says it was really good fun. And then she goes on to describe some of the other presentations that she saw. So again, this is a really simple and effective way of recording the learning by doing that this student did with this presentation. Let's have a look at another one of her examples of learning by doing. As well as this presentation she did, she's also reflected on our trip this semester. So, you can see here the Casa del Hossen Festival. I actually went to the festival. I think this student went to the one next door, but that's okay. It's the Casa del Hossen Festival, and she, you can see there she describes what she did, and she describes the very practical nature of the presentation of the work that she did at the Casa del Hossen. So, I hope you can see from that very brief presentation, how these e-portfolios support learning by doing. I'll just recap then. We've come to the end of our uh, first major part of the, of the course on e-portfolios. I've shown you how to set your e-portfolio up or your basic e-portfolio. And I've shown you some of the features and I've explained some of the thinking behind the way that e-portfolio supports learning. And as a final word, I will say this. If you've enjoyed using your e-portfolios, you could continue to use them all the way through your college careers. I know students who've used e-portfolios with me and then gone on and produced their own e-portfolios to reflect their own interests and have used the e-portfolios to come back to help them with writing essays in their other subjects. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this as much as me and I might see you later on in the semester for ePortfolio Part 2, The Revenge of ePortfolios. Thank you.